Hello and welcome to Joburg Today. I'm Nishina Mohammed. Always a pleasure to have you with us. Well, it's that time of the season where the who's who of the South African music are celebrated for keeping us entertained all through the year. The annual Metro FM Music Awards are set to take place on the 27th of February and Riley attended the nomination ceremony. Members of the South African music industry came together once again to celebrate musical excellence and Joburg Today was there to give you the inside scoop. 15 years is a milestone for us and it's a platinum edition because we feel that we've reached a place where we can look back and say this is how much we've grown. So what's different with this edition is that, you know, we're introducing new things that signifies the growth, you know, and how far we've come from. Thank you so much because they made me win gold in less than 20 minutes, in 20 hours. And then in, less, uh, in two weeks, uh, I went platinum. In less than two months, I'm on triple or four pole by platinum. But with me, I, I sing to inspire. Hey man, I feel happy, I feel blessed. Uh, it's, it's an amazing feeling to be nominated, especially the category that I'm nominated in, best hit single. I'm grateful, man. As a cherry on top, this year's awards will see some changes in the form of a 100,000 rand cash prize for each of the winners and a new category for Best African Artist. There are several reasons why we introduced this new category, the African category, at, the, at this point in time. One, it's because if you look back last year, beginning of last year, we experienced a lot of xenophobic attacks in South Africa. And we felt that we needed to start a conversation that unites Africa. Um, so the, the, the category, the Africa category, is supposed to celebrate those artists that are coming from elsewhere in the continent, but also to unite Africa as one. Again, I took to learn the music industry. Again, I took thirty break about like three years. King Echo industry. So we are one with a good comeback. Like in Zagalila and the nominations, young Chablis, Okomizuti, I still got it. The fact that I've won metros before is also a motivating factor. I think it's a main motivating motivating factor, and. The fact that um, Spanina Bantaba shows particular names, I like the idea of them, like, you know, but to me, are we going to walk away with something? You know, I like that. I like coming them down because I know the moment. You know, I was once a newcomer as well. This is something that was beyond my expectations. I mean, I know the people love the track and I mean, it's on high rotation on Metro, but to get an actual nomination for Best R&B Single is, is just really humbling. I don't know what to say. I don't know about you, but 2015 has definitely been one great year for SA Music. Congratulations to tonight's nominees, and we hope that one of you walks away with that 100k that you're promised. I'm Riley Sakani for Sakwe for Joe Berg today. Like us on Facebook, joebooktoday.tv, and follow us on Twitter at joebooktoday. And if you're a person that's on the move, you can always catch us on pockettv.mobi. That's pocket with an eye. Back to school fever is still on, and stationary outlets like PNA have a plan in place to meet the high demand. Well, recently I chatted to PNA's general manager, Herman Boeta. Herman, tell us about the history of PNA. PNA was founded in 1992. A uh, single owner, he started in Pretoria with one store. Uh, it's now a national group. We've got 61 stores nationwide. So we're in seven mm -hmm. provinces over the country. Wow, that's very yeah. impressive. I'm sure lots of changes took place over the last few years. How did you deal with all those changes strategically? Because it's a franchise group, um, we adapt to change quite easily in terms of our product um, offering. Um, we focused on our core range. Our core range includes stationery, arts and crafts, and educational books, and obviously related products do that. We have a focus on, on the stationery part and the arts and crafts. And because our consumers um, demand, tell us what to do, mm -hmm. we change to that. So that's where we've changed dramatically over the past few years. What would you say sets you apart from your competitors? I think the variety in our stores, um, and because we can adapt to the change so quickly, 
the, the competitors, and not to knock them, I'm not here to do that at all, um, but it takes them a while to get new stock into a store if the consumer demand changes, especially over back to school period like we're in currently. Mm -hmm. um, we can easily adapt if customer wants uh, 192 page exercise book, ach, or faint in margin, um, we can get that quickly. <laughs> Whereas the competitors, it takes them a while to get it through the DCs and all that. Sure. So yes, we, we do that quite quickly. Yeah, one has easily. to be competitive and, ha yeah. and have an edge over everyone else if you want to stay yes. in the market and have a sustained presence in Absolutely. the market. I would say the edge, sorry to interrupt you, the, yeah. the edge is definitely our competitiveness in terms of the variety in our stores. Uh, we offer literally everything in terms of what the school requires. Sure. The trend now is that companies are involved in CSI projects. You a p and as well. Tell us about some of your CSI we, projects. We involved, we've been involved with CHOC, um, Childhood Cancer, in the past 10 months. Um, we've, been to, we've been visiting the CHOC Oncology Ward at the Joburg Gen as well um, last year, and we've been quite involved with that. We've got collection tins in stores, and we've dub we're doubling up in terms of what we're getting uh, from our customers. Mm -hmm. um, so That's very inspirational. Extremely. It's, it's, it's quite heartbreaking when you visit sure. that ward um, there in the hospital. Mm -hmm. So, yes, we've, we've been quite busy with it. It's back to school <coughs> fever. What are you offering yes. children and, and families? That one stop, easy solution in the store. Um, in most instances, the customers, it's a grudge purchase for them uh, this time of the year because they don't have money. <laughs> they don't want to spend it on stationery. It's the last thing they want to do. But in, uh, we offer that solution to them. Well, children the love buying new stationery Absolutely. at the start of school. I mean, school. I just look at my children because I'm in the industry. I mean, they expect everything new yep. um, from a pencil to a pencil bag to a, suit, uh, a briefcase. So, yes, we, we offer that solution. And in most instances, the customer would even drop a list in the store. Um, and from there we'll, we'll just do the shopping for them we'll do the shopping for them and they just buy it at the end of the day the digital <coughs> space is a very exciting space to be in right now <coughs> how are you meeting the digital needs for your stationary users the, the digital needs for stationary it's, it's, we don't see it as an influence on our business at the moment um, the, the most influence it has is on the book section um, stationary you'll, you'll always need a pen you always need paper to write on so yes, we don't, we don't see it as an influence, but we are um, reacting on it. And we've got a few things up our sleeves for the years to come mm -hmm. um, to counter that. I wonder if the pen will ever be replaced. A pen will never be replaced. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. Thank, Thank you. you very much. My name is Shane, the Duke Wellington, also known as MC Dookie in the house, and you're watching Joe Berg Today. There's a lot more on Joe Book today, so be sure to watch our other shows. That's it from Inoshina. I leave you with a catch-up we had with musician David Van Fieren. All those conversations, they echo in the wind. I actually grew up here. I lived here till I was about 13, and then I moved to Johannesburg. And I've always wanted to come back. You've got like hundreds of coffee shops here where you can play these unplugged sets, which I've been doing a lot of actually. I've been playing a lot of the coffee shops and a um, few restaurants like out there in Cold Bay. And it's, yeah, it's a beautiful place. There's so many different uh, beautiful places to play and everywhere you play it's always like such an amazing setting, you know. I came out to Cape Town I think two or three times post Idols and uh, every time it was a great reception. I always had my best shows here in Cape Town. And now that I live here, you know, it's like really starting to build. Being such a small country and such a small music scene that we have here in South Africa, um, in order to uh, you know, in order to maintain exclusivity, I, I figured that you need to play less. So uh, yeah, I'm trying to keep it to like big festivals and like maybe like one big club show a month. I just feel I'm at a certain point in my career now where I need to move on from the whole David from Fear and Idols kind of thing. I've been. Uh, um, thinking about it and thinking about it, what a name, what name could I choose that would really stick, you know? And after like, geez, hundreds of different names, you know, uh, I mean, we even had ridiculous names like uh, Bear Man and Baloo, and uh, yeah, just strange names. But uh, we came up with uh, Southern Wild. Facebook, it's uh, facebook.com forward slash Southern Wild SA, you know, South Africa, and then on Twitter the same. It's at Southern Wild SA. So you can keep in touch with me there, Facebook and Twitter, and also SoundCloud, also Southern Wild they say.
sky Since the day that I remember The world that breathes on lies over I'm so happy I could die. Thank you.